We're going live.
there are consistencies or um, yeah, consistencies in, in some of the black art coming out of the ATL or out of the South in general. Um, does, is there an aesthetic coming out of Atlanta for black artists that you, that you think, or is it all over the place? Um, I wouldn't say that there's a certain black aesthetics. I would say that as a, as a retired, you know, uh, art educator, uh, p- p- professor, and in teaching in public schools, I think it's all over the place. But I think a lot, of, a lot of us from the south is getting a lot of international as as national attention because we bring a different flavor in terms of our work. And I think that you can see that in, in not only in the uh, in the figurative pieces, but a lot to do with the abstract work of, of a lot of artists, such as Eric. Uh, if you look at his work, uh, dealing with the whole idea of not just abstraction, but, but just the machinery. But at the same time, uh, we're fortunate to have collectively and, and, and his wife to, to be supportive. And that's the most important thing uh, um, with, with them sharing that as, as sh- sharing who they think may be the not. Okay. I'm having a little bit of trouble with our connection with hearing you, Kevin. Um, but I wanted to actually follow up with that idea. You said there's a flavor. Um, and I, you know, coming from Chicago, being here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, I understand that idea that there's a flavor. I'm, I, I, can you articulate or expound more upon that I, that flavor coming out of the South, besides barbecue and hot sauce? I think that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that that flavor um, mainly is about the black experience in the South. Okay. And a lot of us show that in our work in different ways. Because uh, I know in my work personally, um, I deal with the idea of, of neckties. And the reason I deal with neckties is because when I graduated from high school, I didn't want to go register to vote. And my grandfather, he took me to a tree where African American was lynched, but they had wow. neckties on the way to vote. Yeah. So that's the reason I use neckties in, in my work. Right. Wow. That's a powerful story. Um, Carrie, what do you think if you had to um, wrap your brain around a flavor from the South in terms of black artists, uh, would you add anything to, to what Kevin said? Well, I thought I heard him mention that it's all over the place. Right. And uh, from, from what I'm seeing now, and I think that's more so because it's a, a generational thing. You know, I started collecting back in the 80s and uh, I would see, uh, and those guys are really senior now, the guys who I started out collecting, you know, some of the Renaissance painters, some of the uh, WPA period painters. But uh, as it gets, uh, I'm, I'm meeting, seeing more and more younger artists now, I'm seeing uh, a, a, a lot more urban flavor, if okay. you will. Mm-hmm. Like uh, there's an artist here, Alfred Conte, and uh, he he's really uh, catches the community very well, and uh, you know, and some of the work I I see, uh, you know, the I, I want to say a hip hop culture, but it may even be the, the 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 generation after that, you know. Okay. So, but uh, you know, just like some of the rappers, they uh, they articulate their surroundings very well. Right. I'm beginning to see those type things. Okay. And you mentioned a moment ago, you alluded to when you started collecting in the 80s. And so um, many of our viewers may not necessarily be privy to um, your story in terms of how you and your wife came to uh, collecting art. Uh, Would you give us a little bit of that background? Uh, Yeah. You know, uh, for the most part, you know, I started (laughs) out. Uh, really just trying to decorate my home. I was a bachelor, I had a very, you know, small home, but I wanted to have something in the house that uh, reflect my ethnicity. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and you know, I just didn't want a picture, you know, uh, like you would get, but uh, something that uh, 
spoke to my heritage, you know. And uh, so as I looked around or I saw the uh, narratives painting by uh, Jacob Lawrence, the, the Harriet Tubman series mm -hmm. and the Toussaint Louverture series. And uh, it, 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 I mean, it told a story uh, of heroes right. and something that you really could take pride in. So I, I wanted to represent like that in my home. And that's where the, you know, the journey started, you know. And um, a, an artist friend of yours made a hero of you, right? So when at the, uh, at the exhibition, uh, at the museum, when you enter, there is a postman. Tell us, <laughs> tell us about that. The, uh, the total. Uh -huh. Of course, I worked for the United States Postal Service for 34 years. Right. And uh, I got a chance to peep a lot of personal collections in Atlanta. And there are some very, very nice collections that are just, you know, people are very behind the scenes. Uh, but uh, one of the artists, or I know many artists now, is Mr. Larry Walker, who's the father of Kara Walker. Uh, I think that that entire family has a, a, just a strong artistic talent that runs through them. But uh, sure. when, I, when I retired, uh, I had given Larry some things uh, just from uh, from from uh, my years of service, my helmet, my raincoat, just some things. And uh, Larry does, uh, I guess he still does it as well as a lot of other things, but he does these totems. And uh, I thought it fitting when we got to Tulsa with all the uh, Native American uh, population there, but and the totems is a theme, you know. Right. Uh, and I didn't know what he was doing with those things. But uh, after he completed it, uh, you know, just as a gift, uh, like a, a memory of my postal career, he created the the the, the Carrie Davis or the mailman. I call it the mailman total. And it is it is quite a way to enter the exhibition. Um, and I know that that piece of art is something that we'll hopefully we'll be able to to post and show um, viewers during this conversation. Um, also, because I can't unfortunately see you right now, sir, um, but I, I, I want to reference your home as you just did, um, and the, the 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 colleague and friend and artist of yours who gave you the term or coined the term a museum in a home. Oh. Um, you have over three hundred pieces of black art uh, that you and Miss Betty C. Betty actually have in your home. Can you talk a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, there. Um, uh, sometimes artists comes to town. That was Mr. Leon Hicks, who's an engraver, printmaker, out of uh, Florida. Uh, very, very well known. But uh, he was in town and uh, wanted to stop by, and uh, we welcome visits from artists. You know, he's somebody I knew for a few years over the phone, and uh, he walked through and uh, just to. Some people are just simply amazed, you know, I, I totally take it for granted. But I think when they walk through a lot of the artists, and, you know, Mr. Hicks is in his 80s, but he started to see not just images, but he started to see his friends. A lot of the artists who's come and gone that he knew over the years that passed away. And, uh, I mean, from room to room, it was like a visit for him. And... Uh, he he used a lot of profane language, but <laughs> out out of it, he said, "This is a in-home museum. This is a you have a museum right here." And and then all of his ideas started. We won't go there, but, <laughs> but that, okay. that's where that that uh that moniker that title come from. And then you know I've I've heard it a couple of times. You know we may be in church and and some of the members we just talking and and. Uh, they would say, oh, you haven't been over to Cary and Betty's. Oh, they have a museum. They, they have a museum. So right. it was, that's just something that just grew and got out there, you know. Okay. And before I pull Kevin back into the conversation, um, you it actually, uh, you and your wife invite members of the community into your home to view this art, correct? Or you have? Well, well, we have. Uh, we invite, you know, we have friends, uh, 
parishioners, family, and other art lovers that we know. Um, so, no, we're not on the porch selling tickets or anything. <laughs> well, I don't know. It might be, might be bad. The economy's poor right now. You might want to think about it. <laughs> you know, neighborhood like and uh, yeah they they come through and we visit and and uh, better call it uh, uh get get ready for carrie he, he's going to do the tour so uh, <laughs> and, and get people calling, you know okay I lost a little bit of that but i think i got the gist of it kevin you joined us in tulsa for the opening of the exhibition right Yes. Yes. So, as you know, um, as you were here for the opening, um, it's the first exhibition of any of the Davises' collection. Um, again, 62 pieces here in Tulsa of their over 300, including your art. Um, it's the first time that the work's been exhibited outside of Atlanta. Um, what were your thoughts of the exhibition as the work was displayed or in the museum? Well, I thought they did a great job of hanging the show. I mean, I thought it was just amazing. And what I did like about it is they hung works that speak to each other. And by that, I mean, anytime you hang a piece of artwork, there's two people it has to say or say something about the other. I did a great job, and I felt in terms of having the exhibition. Okay. And um, how was your experience in Oklahoma? I know it was it was a brief turnaround, but how was the visit for you? Oh, it was very good, and we and we did uh, have the opportunity to have dinner at the nice restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it's no southern barbecue, though. I'm sure. Um, well, we were very glad that that you made the that you made the journey with the Davises and Dr. Uh, Amaki, who is uh, the curator of the collection uh, with the Davises there in Atlanta, um, could not join us today, but um, very much a, an important presence. Actually, um, Carrie, I've been meaning to ask you, how did you meet Dr. Uh, Amaki? <sighs> I'm trying, trying to go back. It, it's been a, it was a long time ago, one. And uh, uh, just like how I met Kevin, it, it was a long time ago. You know, it seemed like I've been knowing him all of my life. Um, the actually how I met, I mean, she was always around. I mean, I was always on the scene and, and uh, Amalia, I would always see her. She would be maybe some part of a panel discussion. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, oh, and, and she was, she curated the Paul Jones collection, who I met and known years ago, was a big collector here in Atlanta, and worked at the HUD uh, Housing Urban Development Building. Uh, and uh, I, I was his mailman for a while over at the federal building. And uh, I, I knew about Paul Jones, and uh, she was an assistant to Paul Jones. That's probably where that initial meeting came from okay. but it seems like she was always there always around uh during the 80s well she predates me a little bit just a little bit and uh she was she was always around and uh you know i've uh, always enjoyed her work as well let me have that mask uh and we have some uh, uh take it out take it out we we have uh you know, we have her 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 work as male as well. And I'm gonna give you just a little I well, don't know if you can see I, this. I can't see it, but our viewers can, and that's what's most important. Okay. It's uh one of her buttoned masks, so yeah. So um I'm assuming that 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 Miss Miss C Betty handed that to you, sir. Yes, she's uh, she's in the background over here. She's my <laughs> she's my assistant. <laughs> hey, I'm the assistant, Betty Davis. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Kevin. Hey, Betty, how are you? Good. 
Well, I'm glad you're there, Miss Betty, because I actually was going to ask this question um, that is connected to, related to you, um, but I was going to ask it to Kevin and then your husband, but um, I will ask you. Um, so how much of the art that you all, that you two have collected, um, were you directly um, and singularly involved in selecting and to, to purchase? Well, Carrie's very good about sharing what he is interested in. So he'll, he'll come home and he'll talk to me about it. If I'm not available, if I'm not at home, he'll send me pictures that we're so grateful for devices. So I'll get a picture. Which one do you like best? Or, you know, I, I've talked to this artist and what speaks to you? So he shares. So we share in a lot of it. Okay. And are there particular pieces that you two have collected that are the most meaningful um, to you? Wow, yeah, I do like, I still go back to my Mo Booker piece. Oh, you can't even see me, which is in this room that we're in. Um, Kevin was uh, one who actually got the piece for me. Is that he right? was in and it was our anniversary time. And I was on the phone with Kevin and he was there. Uh, what's the gallery, Kevin? Sandy Webster. Oh, Sandy Webster, right. He was there, we were on the phone. Kevin was doing the negotiation. Do you remember that, Kevin? And we were gonna surprise yeah. Gary. I remember. <laughs> you remember? <laughs> <laughs> I'm from yeah. Philly and I just love Mo's work, I do. It speaks a lot to me because it, it, it really represents Philadelphia, the graffiti, the streets. So um, yeah, that was one of the, the best anniversary gifts I think Carrie received from me, right Carrie? Say yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, thank you for that. At the um, at the opening, I believe that, uh, ma'am, you told a story um, about uh, a piece of art, a sculpture, I believe. Um, I don't know if it was one of Kevin's, but a piece of sculpture that um, that scared you, that frightened you in the middle of the night, perhaps, or based on where it was located. Do you remember that story? <laughs> My husband, he sometimes surprises me. That was a piece he did surprise me with. And that was a totem, actually, that was we it? had here. Um, the mailman. It, you have to understand, um, in our home, I know the pieces. And I came in, and he wanted to surprise me, and the piece was near a French door. So it's right by the door. So when I walked in the room, oh my God, and it's Carrie. So Carrie wasn't here, he was upstairs. And then this this, this totem here and it's Carrie. But of course I couldn't see that it was Carrie because it was dark. I was like my husband. But yeah, it's a great piece though. It's a great one. And it represents who he was and right now, it still sticks that he's the postman. People see him on the street. He's the postman. He's still that man. And, you know, I don't know that we appreciate um, the, our postal carriers nowadays like, uh, like, like we used to. I think they used to have a, a role in the community, um, in the neighborhoods that maybe they no longer, um, no longer possess for some reason. I don't know if that's a generational thing. I don't know if that's technology. Um, but that's my sense. What do you think about that, Carrie? Uh, maybe a little bit, a little bit of both, you know, that, that job, uh, it, and it may be, uh, technology and, and generational because, uh, uh, you know, it's not, uh, people don't, well, I won't say, I, I don't think the, this, this generation see it as, as vital as it used to be, you know, well, but I tell you, I still to my good friends, I still write a handwritten letter uh, to uh, to friends of mine, and especially older generation, you know. But uh, yeah, that that job is something that, particularly today, during what we, I mean, what we're going through right now, uh, I take my hats off uh, to what that they are frontline people as well. Right. Right. Essential workers, which is important in this time as well, right? Um, 
So Michael Ellison created the Mickey D's piece, which was um, the piece that we uh, used um, as our primary promotions for the Memories and Inspirations exhibition um, here at Gilcrease. And that piece, of course, is a, is a gathering of folks at a, at, a, at a McDonald's, Mickey D's at a McDonald's. Um, and it had us it me thinking and, and, and um, friends, members of the Tri-City Collective who, who aided in curation of the uh, exhibition here, thinking about gathering places or community places. Um, so Kevin, where, where do artists congregate in Atlanta? Do artists congregate? You know, I mean, no, I, understanding that no one co is congregating anywhere right at this moment, but prior to um, this moment, where, where do artists congregate in Atlanta? Well, there are a lot of places. Uh, well, there are a lot of places that we normally do. Um, normally, we visit other artist studios. But also, I, I'm a part of a group called Africa Cobra. I don't know if you're familiar with Africa Cobra. Uh, very, 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 very familiar. Yes, but but tell our audience about them. Okay. Well. After Cobra were, were a group of artists that started in, started in Chicago, and right. um, they they actually started the Black Arts Movement, and which After Cobra stands for African African Communion of Bad Relevant Artists. Right. And uh, the group, I would say, if you had to describe them, they were like the the the, the Black Panthers of the art world. Right. That's what they were like. In other words, they came with their own aesthetics and their own ideas of what art art should be like. So um, there. So here in Atlanta, a few of us meet at, at different artist studios, and then um, what happened was the National Black Arts Festival was a. It was a. It was a great time for a lot of us because it brought artists from all over the world to the city of Atlanta, and and then Carrie and I are part of a group called SMART, Small SM Capital ART, which are art collectors, and we normally meet every three to six months at a different first, a different uh, home, and we look at their art collection, and we talk about art, which is very, which is where a lot of us meet different artists, and we also um, get together and and just talk art. Right. And I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you for that because when um when I was asked to to serve as guest curator for the exhibition here and doing my research to do diligence on the Davises and on the collection and again being introduced to that concept of a museum and a home, we started to think about who are the collectors of black art in Tulsa? So let me ask you that um, are how many members are there of this or of this smart organization? Um, how many? How large is the membership there? I would say uh, between um, maybe eleven and fifteen, or, wow. or even even more collectors. Because what you what you have are, are collectors on different levels. You right. have the ones who have who were just starting to collect. Then you have the mid the mid range collectors, and then you have the more established art collectors, just like here and Betty. And also you have a lot of artists who collect. I've been collecting ever since I was uh, my sophomore year of college. And, and the way I started, I, I was trade with other artists. Right. And so, you know, during the National Black Arts Festival, what we would do, we'd throw a party and invite artists and, and, and collectors in, and they came from all, 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 over, the, all over the country. Okay. Well, that's, um, that's encouraging to hear that, um, that SMART has that many members. Uh, we were certainly uh, put out a call and, and put some in elbow grease into looking for black collectors in Tulsa um, and certainly didn't come up with quite as many, but of course, Tulsa is not the same size as, uh, as Atlanta, but that's, that, that is reassuring to, to hear. Um, and so Kevin, you're a sculptor. Is, I mean, was that your, is, well, actually, let me back up and say, is sculpture your primary, um, primary medium? Um, yes and no. Um, okay. it's funny you said that because, um, 
I, I received my undergraduate scholarship in sculpture, but I was mainly, uh, I worked on paper as a painter and a, and a printmaker. But I think at, at the end of the day, um, most of my works are primarily on, on wood, in which if you notice the piece that they have, that, that's wood. I'm bending wood. I'm one right. of the few artists that is actually bending wood. What's your process for that? How do you bend? What do you? What's your process to bend wood? And in black man secret. <laughs> we, will, we will honor your secret. <laughs> well, it's magnificent work, um, and we will we will keep your, we will you will keep your secret recipe to yourself. That's fine. We will respect that. Okay. <laughs> um, thinking again, and uh, we'll wrap up in a few. Uh, but thinking about uh, uh, Mr. Davis, Kerry, you you had some military experience um, as well. Does um, did any of your art choices um, anyhow speak to your background in the military or your childhood? Uh, so much speak military, yeah. Maybe okay. Toussaint, the General Toussaint Louverture by Jacob Lawrence. Right. Uh, you know, for sure, I love that profile. And again, uh, 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 a hero. Um, uh, out, as far as childhood, I don't know if you could see over my right shoulder. I can't see you at all, sir, <laughs> but oh, go ahead. Yeah. Anyway, if you could, <laughs> there's a Charles White. <laughs> Uh, drawing, it, it seems to be uh, a, a figure in a choir rope. Okay. And uh, it's just so tastefully done. And it, it just kind of takes take me back to my Southern Baptist roots, I guess, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, my father was a big deacon in the church, and okay. which, which means we were his disciples, so we had to do all the cleaning and all of that kind of thing. <laughs> It, it just often reminds me of some of the songs we saw. Just that inner strength, that inner peace that brings uh, me from my childhood. Right, right. Uh, and and that's, I'm sure there's some other things, things around, around me, you know. And the collection, you know, it, it involves a, a, a little bit of everything. There's non-objective art, there's sculpture, there's portraiture, um, you know, there's... It, it's so expansive. Um, is there, are there any sort of common themes or threads in terms of what you're drawn to? Common uh, thing. I mean, it, 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 it would see, I mean, I, I see different artists and, uh, you know, what they do differently. I, I'm attracted to all mediums, you mm -hmm. know, and, um, you know, if I, as far as Catlett is concerned, I, I like her sculpture, but her prints as well. And, right. uh, but that, that's what she did. And, you know, and the things that the same thing with Kevin, yeah, I mean, I like his sculpture, but his paintings as well. Uh, I just try to get the, um, what that artist is known for and, and yeah. just get, best that I can get or whatever I can afford of uh, what, you know, what whatever I choose. Right. So I guess when you walk through and you just see a lot of different things, um, you can't put me in a box. I'm just multi. <laughs> I'm like, my appreciation is just, you know, multifaceted, you know. You uh, sure? Have a quick, uh, so. You sure Miss Betty can't put you in a box? Uh, well, she's not in the room. So no. <laughs> I'm sorry, say that again? Uh, I said, since she's not in the room now, no, she can't put Ah, because she's out of earshot. Okay, yeah. you're a smart man, very smart man. Uh, okay, gentlemen, anything um, else you'd like to, to share in closing before we wrap up? Um, I would like to say I really want to thank the Gilcrease Museum and their staff. They did an excellent job, and they made us feel so welcome when uh, we came out to Tulsa. I'd never been to Oklahoma be before, 
And I think Amalia may, be, may have been the only person with us who had been in Oklahoma before, but um, they showed us a very good time. And uh, it's a memory that uh, I'll always cherish. We had a lot of laughs on the plane on the flight back to Atlanta. So I just say again to uh, the Gilcrease and their staff, thank you so much. And I really enjoyed the tour that we had there. Um, art is art. I mean, I collect African-American art, but I had an opportunity to see a lot of Native American art, a, a, just a lot of other things that were just so beautiful. And I appreciate that opportunity. Well, thank you, sir. We were very happy to and uh, fortunate to have you and Miss Betty and Dr. Uh, Amaki and the exhibition and Kevin um, and the other artists who joined you um, in Tulsa and in the museum. Kevin, any uh, last things you'd like to share before we sign off? Uh, yeah, I want to just convey this, the, the, the same thought that Carrie made. Uh, I mean, the staff is wonderful. It was very um uh the the hospitality was great the only thing i wish that it would have happened that that was a catalog it was just it was just such a well hung show the work selected was was they did an excellent job but still i had a i, I had a great had a great time and uh you know hopefully this is something that that will happen again uh in which i did send them a lot of information about the show in terms of African American artists as well. Well, thank you for that, um, and thank you for your your kind words, both of you, your kind words about about the museum staff um, and about um, the curator, guest curator, which is yours truly, um, and Tri City Collective, uh, my partners in crime, uh, who help um, curate the uh, Great Ways to Tulsa panels and um, uh, other aspects of the exhibition as well. So we're looking forward to um, getting through this this difficult moment that we're in as a as a world, um, as a globe, and um, getting um, back to the museum, getting more folks to, in front of um, and to engage with that art. I will share this with you in closing that I did have the opportunity to lead several tours. Um, uh, through the collection um, as guest curator, including um, a tour with some young people. And one of the one of my most cherished interactions um, in leading those tours was standing with a group of, I don't know, maybe eight, 10 year olds. Um, and they were um, just enthralled by the by the Bearden piece um, oh. and trying to find the musicians, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's great. That's a good one. Yeah, um, it was it was a wonderful wonderful thing. Uh, they're engaging with the abstract to find the more concrete within um, within that piece, and it was just a remarkable thing to to see again to validate um, that art moves us to think. It doesn't tell us what to think. Um, that the value in art and art education is that it validates self-expression, it validates culture, um, it, it commands respect, and it commands that, and demands that we think. We think about uh, life and world beyond ourselves um, and that all of our interpretations are valid. So thank you, Miss C. Betty Davis. Thank you, Mr. Kerry Davis. Thank you, uh, Mr. Kevin Cole, for uh, your art, for your gifts that you share with us here at, uh, at Gilcrease and in Tulsa and with the world. Um, it can only make this place better um, and pray that we all stay safe and healthy and that we can continue to create this art. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. All right, love. Have a great, great day. Thank you, sir.